On this 13th Sunday after Pentecost, great grace and peace be with you. We're happy to have you all here, and we're happy to have all of you who are worshiping online with us this morning. Thank you for being here. If it's your first time here or online, I'm Pastor Jeff. Uh, thank you for being with us, and make sure you download the bulletin if you have some sort of device with you at bensonmemorial.org, or the liturgy is all going to be up here on the screen, but you won't get all of the wonderful, fabulous announcements and graphics if you don't download the bulletin. So make sure you do that. Uh, a couple of announcements. First, uh, today from 2 to 4, we are going to have a fill that bus school supply drive for our sister school, Jeffreys Grove Elementary. So make sure you come here between 2 and 4 today to drop off your school supplies. Some of you have uh, brought them with you this morning. We have a little collection out the narthex so far. But again, 2 to 4, you're welcome to drop them off. And if we do, in fact, end up filling the bus, Bob Sylvester Sylvester has a dunking booth because, of course, Bob Sylvester has a dunking booth. 
if you know Bob, it's, of course he does in his garage. Um, and uh, uh, Kelly Lynn will be the recipients of dunking uh, if we do fill that bus. So uh, make sure you do that today. Couple of other things. Uh, Pastor Kelly Lynn asked me if uh, I would feel self indulgent announcing my own baby shower. So, at the risk of sounding self indulgent, uh, next Sunday we'll be having a baby shower from two to three. It's going to be a drive through baby shower. So, uh, we hope to see you there and thank you in advance for that. Um, during the Sunday school hour over the last few weeks, we have been having some discussions about Christian buzzwords that we don't have the opportunity to talk about very often, even though we might use these words quite often. And uh, we have two more sessions of this. So uh, for the next two Sundays, we'll be meeting together at 10 o'clock in the main room of the fellowship hall to talk about, I think we decided on God's plan and the Bible says. So if you want to be a part of any of those discussions, then uh, you can stop by there. Um, Sunday school. We are offering Sunday school to gather together in person during the Sunday school hour on campus starting on September 12th. Different Sunday school classes uh, are at varying levels of comfort with this, obviously. So make sure you check with your Sunday school teacher and they'll let you know what direction uh, they want to go in for that. But the nursery is going to be available starting on September 12th. Finally, we are grateful for Cam and Chris Frazier who've given the flowers this morning in honor of their 47th wedding anniversary. So happy anniversary to Cam and Chris Frazier. And we're also grateful for Jolene and Jennifer and Carla who are leading us in worship this morning. Please stand as you are able and join me in the greeting. Thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord. The hymn is How Lovely, Lord, How Lovely.
May be seated. The uh, please join me in the opening prayer. Better is one day in your course, O Lord, than a thousand elsewhere. Teach us to sing for your joy and to live as those who go from strength to strength. As we trust in you, amen. The Old Testament lesson is Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, indeed it faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools, they go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord, of, O God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Carla. Our New Testament lesson comes from Ephesians chapter 6, beginning with verse 10. Hear the word of the Lord. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day. And having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As for shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. 
Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. Again, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, we are at the end of Ephesians. This is our last Sunday in the cycle of this New Testament epistle readings. Ephesians, you may remember, begins with this sweeping praise of God, whose covenant of grace has been revealed in Christ for all people, Jews and Gentiles. Paul teaches that it's been God's will from the very beginning to unite humanity into one body, breaking down the dividing walls that have been put up between us. And as we've journeyed through Ephesians together over the last several weeks, we noticed that there was a shift that happened in chapter 4, where Paul changes gears and takes on a much more practical tone, teaching how this new unity, this new humanity in Christ will be reflected in our lives and transformed lives. And that that transformed life will not look like the prevailing culture. Our life in Christ is to be marked, Paul teaches, by only speaking in ways that build up community and build up one another. We are to be kind and tender-hearted, forgiving one another just as Christ has forgiven you. There will be challenges, Paul admits, even battling forces of evil, but the strength of God's power is ours to claim as we seek to live as those who belong to Jesus. And so we come to our passage today in this last chapter of Ephesians 6. Paul begins the chapter with a summation of the letter to drive home his main themes, and then he uses this very common image of militaristic body armor that his audience would see on Roman soldiers throughout every single day. But he transforms this image in a most non-militaristic way. He reappropriates the the parts of body armor, the belt, the breastplate, the shield, to be metaphors for the values of truth and righteousness and faith faith. So the armor, usually a symbol of self-reliance, is actually transformed here into a symbol of dependence, dependence on God for our strength. It's the strength that God gives us through this non-armor armor that helps us live into maturity as those who follow Christ with transparency and truth with mercy and faith and trust in the Spirit's work in and through us. Some of us grew up with this passage and probably actually made body armor parts <laughs> in Sunday school. I did. Anybody else do that? We, we made our own shield and our own breastplate and our own helmet. But I don't remember what we did with the shoes. And I find this passage... So interesting because of this one verse, chapter fifth, verse 15. Paul says, As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. It doesn't matter what kind of shoes you wear, Paul says. Whatever shoes will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. Well, during the dragging on of this pandemic, our feet have actually experienced some extra care and freedom 
that we wouldn't have necessarily given them prior to the pandemic. Do you know what I mean? Think about your go-to shoes these days. For many of us in the South in the summer, our shoes have likely been sandals, rainbow flip-flops or Birkenstocks or Tevas or maybe even Crocs. Lately, I've been subsisting, and I'm, I mean subsisting. I have been living in this new pair of slip-on Chacos that I got back in the spring. And they have just enough arch support to wear all day long. Uh, I wear them walking the dog, just around the house. I wear them to Wegmans or Target or to the beach. They were the only shoes I took to the beach or to the mountains. I've been subsisting in these shoes. My absolute favorite shoes, though, my cowboy boots, have remained on the shelf high in my closets during the pandemic. And I look at them every time I go into that closet and I sigh with grief over when I might have a reason to wear them again, right? I've had no reason to wear my boots. My, now, my hiking boots, my trail shoes, they've gotten some regular action on the weekends uh, throughout this last year and a half. But those Chacos, I'm telling you, they have fit the bill for all my shoe-wearing needs. For days when I'm working from home, they are on my feet from the moment I get out of bed until I lay down to sleep at night, except to sit on the couch and put my feet up or to tend to my yoga practice. They are on my feet. The only place I haven't worn them has been to church. This is weird because I have this thing about church shoes. I'm sure it came from my mom. Sorry, mom. I know you're watching. <laughs> now, one day I did forget to change my shoes into appropriate church-wearing shoes in my mind, and I came to the office with those chocos on, and I, I, like, apologized to everybody who saw me that day. I have this whole category this is a big confession. We talked about confession earlier today. I have a whole category of shoes that I call preacher lady shoes that are appropriate for church. They're, now, <laughs> they're all Mary Janes or Dance Ghost Clogs. That's all they are. But I have like, you know, five pairs of each, yeah. Shoes speak volumes about the kind of day we have planned. Frederick Beekner writes, if you want to know who you really are as distinct from who you like to think you are, keep an eye on where your feet take you. Peace is the goal, Paul says, with our feet. Our feet get us where we're going. Now, Paul doesn't commit to any one style of shoe as the most appropriate shoe for spreading the gospel of peace, so I can lay down my preacher lady shoe issues. High heels or tennis shoes will do. But the work of peace is hard. It's never-ending work, so we might actually want to consider steel toe work boots, right, to tend to the work of peace. Sometimes... We can get so caught up with the big ideas of peace and justice that we can neglect the opportunities around us every day to extend kindness and forgiveness and peace. Tish Harrison Warren, who wrote the last book we read in our summer reading group, Liturgy of the Ordinary, she says, I cannot seek God's peace and mission in the world without beginning right where I am in my home, in my neighborhood, in my church, with the real people right around me. When we practice the passing of the peace a little later in our worship service this morning, we are acting out how we are called to live as believers in Jesus every day in a small gesture. We offer the peace of God to one another in worship. So that peace can find its way into our everyday lives. In the mostly small, unseen moments as we love and care for our families, our friends, our coworkers, our neighbors, strangers, 
and the waiter at our favorite restaurant. This is the work of peace. Whatever shoes you put on, may they be shoes of peace. Look at your shoes right now. Everybody look. Those of you at home, you may not have shoes on. It's okay. Your feet and whatever you put on them are to be of peace. Wherever your feet take you are to be the feet that take you to spread the gospel of peace, the good news of peace, which we all need. The shoes that help you stand firm, not in your own power or your own strength, but in the strength of Christ, who is the Prince of Peace. Thanks be to God. As we pray together this morning, we want to remember Tom and Rosemary Loy. Uh, Rosemary lost uh, two of her brothers over the last couple of days, Charles and Kelvin. So be in prayer for them as they grieve and as they travel. Let's pray. God, we long for peace. When we see pictures and videos of violence in Afghanistan or devastation in Haiti, we make noise and we try to assign blame. But at the heart of that is the same pain and grief that the psalmists put into the words, how long, how much longer is this going to be happening? So here are cries of anger and frustration and confusion and receive them as prayer. As we work for peace, help us to see that even our solutions can be short-sighted. So give us a bigger imagination for what true peace means and where it can be found. So often we desperately search for large-scale global solutions to global problems, but this search often leaves us frustrated and only distracts us from the fact that we can act in small ways where we are. So give us a deeper sense for the interconnectedness of all things and show us that seeking peace, forgiveness, and reconciliation with our own family, friends, and community does have a global impact. Free us from the apathy that comes from being overwhelmed by the size and scale of global problems so that we can work for peace where we are. Hear our prayers for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. For the people of Afghanistan and Haiti. For everyone who is displaced and for all those we name before you now. We offer all these prayers in the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit and who teaches his friends to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand together. And from wherever you are to wherever you see other people, turn and offer your friends the peace of Christ. And make sure you wave at the camera as well to everybody at home. And give a peace be with you to everybody at home.
And you may be seated. BensonMemorial.org slash give is where you can go to make your offering online. If you're here in person, there are offering plates in the uh, aisles where you can go to make your offering during the offertory, or you can just leave your offering as you leave. And as always, you can text to give using the number that's on the screen. Our closing hymn is Standing on the Promises. Let's stand and sing together.
I invite you to receive this blessing. Whatever shoes are on your feet, may they be shoes that take you to share the good news of peace. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.